Well, we're, we're used to living in a connected world. But what if you can't use your cell phone or your computer because the power grid is knocked offline? In tonight's special report, Luke Moretti looks at old school technology that could make a difference. Luke? Yeah, Jackie and Don, what if there's a telecommunications failure and the only means of getting through involves a series of dashes and dots? Now, we're talking about Morse code developed in the 1800s and initially used to transmit messages across telegraph wires. Could that be the answer? Imagine the western New York region without electricity, a catastrophic loss of power, or worse, the North American power grid goes dark. Modern modes of communications like cell phones and the internet become useless. It's a very big concern throughout the country and the world. Buffalo FBI special agent in charge Adam Cohen says our reliance on telecommunications has grown tremendously over the years. Everybody expects their phones to work and they expect to be able to send a text or an email message when they need to. If telecommunications systems are down, people won't be able to reach out to friends or family members. There's been increased public attention surrounding the possibility of an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, which could overload the power grid and produce widespread blackouts. It's conceivable that you would be without power for months. Ham radio operator Steve Piotrowski, who works for Erie County Emergency Services, says the threat of an EMP is very real. He says these bursts of energy could come from a high-altitude nuclear detonation or a massive solar storm. It could cause substations to fail. It could cause local transformers to fail. The uh, power surge could cause lots of things in your house to fail or in commercial structures. It, it could be devastating. Cohen says a more realistic event could involve a cyber attack from a hostile nation state. Or by somebody doing hacking um, activity against telecommunications systems. So then what? If tried and true modes of communications fail because of a natural disaster or nuclear attack, what happens then? We can always go back to good old Morse code. In this case, a system of sending messages using long and short signals of sound which match letters and numbers. Think of it as text messaging, the old-fashioned way. Just dots and dashes. Tony Biscaglia is an accomplished international Morse code operator. From his Grand Island home, Biscaglia communicates with other radio operators from around the world. But instead of using his voice, he prefers dashes and dots, which he says could be ideal during a dire situation. It would probably take me a half an hour to take one of these radios out here, grab one of my battery packs that's in the garage that's all charged up, ready to go, put an antenna up and get the radio on the air. Biscaglia, along with Dick Stein and Mark Adams, are ham buddies and members of a local amateur radio club. They say Morse code is a useful alternative to voice transmissions during an emergency. For one, sending the signal doesn't require much power. With the amount of light you use to light up you know, your bathroom or your hallway at night, we're communicating all over the world, typically using Morse code. Morse code is kind of the mode of last resort. Erie County has a pre-established organization of amateur radio operators at its disposal. Steve Piotrowski says they bring a unique skill set to the table. Part of their ha hobby is building their own antennas, sometimes building their own radios, operating in less than optimal conditions. These are all the skills that we would need during a, a large-scale emergency. Amateur radio, which requires licensing by the Federal Communications Commission, can be a lot of fun for the hobbyist looking to connect around the globe. That's one thing. When the time push comes to shove and there's a need for emergency communications, they want you to jump in the pool. They don't want you sitting on the chaise lounge with a beer in your hand. According to the American Radio Relay League, there are over 741,000 active amateur radio licenses in the U.S. and around 3 million operators in the world. The political world goes away on amateur radio. They are pilots of the airwaves. They're in good times and bad. We're friends. Regardless of where we live or what our political thought process is. No boundaries. No boundaries. Doesn't exist. And while many hams use Morse code for fun. This is PA0ABM. This old school technology as a last resort could be the answer when normal communications fail. 
the old-fashioned types of communications, at least for some period of time, may be the only way to communicate. What's old is new again. We're going to be there with our radios, and we're going to be helping the local first responders to communicate when they're down. And it's, it's happened over and over again. Well, for the most part, Morse code is used for fun these days. It's no longer a skill that's required to get a ham radio license. But if something catastrophic happens, it's good to know there are people out there who can still communicate using dashes and dots, especially if voice and digital technologies are no longer an option. You never know. You never I've know. I've been very worried about this. There's a lot of talk about the yeah, EMP, right. that kind of thing. But it's good to know. They're there. They're there. And they're yeah. ready. Thank you, Luke. Okay.